Salutations, my fellow nerds and others. Oh, like this is General Hana, and today I'm going to be playing some, uh, some. Wow. I'm going to be playing the Stanley Parable. Yay! Actually, medium should be fine. Should be fine. Alright, so. Um. Let's see. Ha! Ah, that is. This is the best game because of this. Right here, right now. This is the best. Right because of this little counter right here. That this is why this is the best game ever. Just because of that. Let's begin the game. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the Stanley Parable is a game about a man, but <laughs> let me give you the um, other story. Well, this game is uh, about choices and making choices on your own or by the story, uh, which is the narrator. So, yeah, that's all I can give you right now because, uh, yeah, that's really all. I mean, you either make you make choices. This is the, the game of choices, the game of life. Except for, well, this game of life is much, much better in my opinion. All right. Nah, the end is loading. The end is never. Never is the end. Never the end is. Never the enders. Mmm. Funny. <coughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. Yoda. Yoda. I can't make that voice. It sounded like a demon had crawled out of my stomach. Oh my gosh. I. Uh, it... <sighs> trying to make a funny joke. Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's go. The end is never. Never the end is. Okay. Let's do this. Wow, this is taking quite a bit of time. Hope. Well, usually this takes quite a long time, so um, I shouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's anything. The oh. Oh. Uh, this is I, the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Alright, sorry, uh, I totally forgot. Um, wow, this must be ear-rapingly loud. Jeez, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me actually quick go look how loud it was. Um, and yeah, be right back. Well, I realized that it actually wasn't too loud, so I'm going to keep it at a nice medium. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. I Perhaps shall. he had simply missed a memo. For this one, I'll actually follow what he says, see what happens. I don't remember. I haven't played in a while, so, yeah. Ah, you can't jump, right? When Stanley right. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And into the left I shall go. Um, for each thing, I'll, a video, I'll try to do like two endings, because it kind of takes a long time. Some endings take like, mm, a long Yet, time. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, 
Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it bowl up inside you, take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. We're saying co-workers for not supporting you more. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I actually, you know what? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh no, it's not gonna do this again, is it? Alrighty, I am back. Uh, sorry. Apparently, um, it crashed, uh, after I... Oops. After I actually, uh, checked the video. Yeah, no. Didn't change. Okay, I guess I just can't do it while the game's running. Okay. Well, I think, if that I'm correct, this is, this should be, um, I think I made this save just so I don't have to go through the entire thing of, uh, waiting for a long load, so I just went ahead and made this. Ah, that was good. Alrighty, now to wait. Whatever shall I do? Hallelujah. Oh, that was quick. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I should make a save, though. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Guess I'm gonna have to walk through. All of his co-workers were gone. What, what could, could it, it mean? mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, everything's working fine. I put the shader down to medium. I didn't really think that was... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Left, yes. To the left, baby. Yet there was not a single person here either. Okay, Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley decided to go there up to his boss's office, papers, hoping he might papers. find an answer there. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the synergy. Who moved my desk? <laughs> Push for funding for R&D. New coffee machine. Get Chris out of the room crowd. Uh, the future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Okay! <laughs> to wait tomorrow. What is... Wait, is that new? Everyone is unique. You most of all. Charts. Charts and slides. Slides. <laughs> Ah, uh, tomorrow. Complete today's and finished agenda items. Write next day's agendas. Reflect. Huh, great. I love all of these. The broom closet. We shall go into there another time. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Uh-huh. Up to the boss. The boos. And right into the executive bathroom. Oh, come on. It looks really nice in there. Ah, I want. I want to be there. Can I close you? No, I can't. Oh, now you closed, you little stubborn brat. Can I, can I look at your phones? Oh, right. I can't jump, so I can't jump over anything. What does that say? Is that a card? Looks like some kind of greeting card. Nope. Stupid charts. Really? Darn it. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from go. him. You guys can and read so this. the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 
2845. But of, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons <laughs> on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. What I actually was going to do was do it right before him. Um, and what he'd say is, oh, you're so, like, stressed out or something like that. Yeah. Um, you're, since you're in a, such a rush, go ahead and listen to, like, this new age, calming new age music. Down the elevator shaft. Too bad I can't jump. Then I can't, like, you know, like, jump and then, like, hit the ground really hard. I wonder if there is actually an, a way to kill yourself. Like, just, I don't know. <laughs> like, without it being the game's fault. Like, without it being the game that the building, yeah. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar like killing yourself it but it not being of emotion in his chest as though he felt more free to think for himself to question the nature of his job why did he feel this now when for years it had never occurred to him I don't know maybe, this maybe question would I'm not go unanswered for long well that is unless I take the Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door escape. that read Mind Control Facility. The escape. Now I'll take the facility. Since this is the main storyline, I'm going to do that first. The lights rose on Ooh. an enormous room packed with television screens. Television. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now, normal people in the U.S. would be like, Ah, oh, this here is a darn big room full of TVs. Hey, do one of them have uh, that animal planet show or or true TV? They funny. <laughs> I don't know. Let's keep going. Cool, neat room, though. Did you know that some of the Val people at Valve actually helped make this game? That's why it's uh, also made with Source. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature. Four two seven. Four two seven. Each bore the number of an employee. Yeah, there we go. Stanley's co-workers. Right there. There should the be an arrow on the screen. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on the screen. It'll show you where it is. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. When does it turn all the numbers? Cause I gotta see something. Or show you guys something. Oh, also, keep that thing up in mind there. Oh, fired. See, yeah, there's people who got fired. This mind control facility. It was too horrible <gasps> to believe it couldn't be true. <gasps> Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? <gasps> was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? <gasps> His emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly. <laughs> <coughs> oh, jeez. No. He refused to no. believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Hey, just wondering. Do you guys want me to do webcam? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and My for all. My control is idle. Too bad I can't zoom in. <laughs> Mind control optimo. Property something. Off. and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Oh, I thought everything yes. was gonna blow up. He had won. Blow up. 
He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. <gasps> and yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's <clears throat> grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Wow. This is... Oh my gosh. This game... Oh, I love this ending. It has beautiful music at the end. And really inspirational speech, I guess. If, yeah, basically. Basically. This is really nice looking. Eh, I guess I'll step. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Now let's get into ext some extremely unserious funny stuffs. So, since I want to keep the minimum down to a two, um, stories per, 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 per um, thing, I'll go ahead and just do one more for today. Oh. Ooh. I actually have gotten this before. I remember. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, cool, huh? I'm going through the left, baby. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Now I want to go through your doors. All right. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley's, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll go through this door. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot. Oh, yes. Here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, mm -hmm. but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her, huh? Who is her? It, Stanley, your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To, to let, let her, her back, back into, into your, your life. life. She's been waiting. Oh no, That's it's her, her. Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Where does this cord go to? As Stanley picked up the <laughs> phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. <laughs> oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. <laughs> Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? 
None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. <laughs> I can't believe it. How would I not notice The phone's still similar? on. There's a red you dot. Understand me. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have I that kind not. of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the world. Oh, thank you, world. sir. Please observe this helpful instructional Stress video. This is the best choice. It's the best part of being a real person. <laughs> but if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named That's Stephen that. has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 <laughs> kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Uh, Remember that ladder. unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. My goodness, is it already 4.30? I'm late for my back sack and crack. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. <laughs> Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? More. And finally, <laughs> if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. <laughs> At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay. Ah, welcome Whoa. back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, Danger we're going everywhere. to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes stop, ago stop, stop, and see stop. what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. please. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Oop, I thought I got stuck. I thought I crashed there. I'm like, oh no, great. Nah, there's no thingy. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. I really Imagine want the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped <laughs> to deal with reality. Yeah. I can see that. Ah, oh, darn it, they have things everywhere. I can't get on top of that, can I? I can't get on top of anything. I can. And, uh, yes, yeah, no, of course, wouldn't let me do that, would ya? Would ye? Do not lie, you're lying, right now, stop. Okay, stop lying, in a million years, I am lying because I won't live a million years. Almost there, you'll take the door on the left, Back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real you world. You really, really think I'm going to go ahead and choose now remember, the left door? Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> oh, is that the When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh no, baby. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Perhaps. Eh. 
I don't think it's gonna work. Yep. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? Everything is okay. What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my yeah. story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. <laughs> I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? Oh, sure. I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game don't, down. Don't, don't, no, to. sir. I have to. Don't. No. And he shut down the game. Just right. And it's back on. Here. I'm still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the yep. only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. Mm -hmm. What, did you think that would be funny? Yeah! You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He yeah. actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Really? That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? Mm. That there's no, a world really. outside of you? You're yeah. a child. Kind of. Oh. My story. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Is behave exactly what? as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story <laughs> first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right. Okay. No. Why did you do that? Quickly. Hurry. Just <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Okay. Just behave exactly as Stanley would. I'll actually go that the wrong means way. means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'll actually go to the left. It's probably going to be ruined anyway. What? No. Yet there was not a single person here really? either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. So it must be different. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Really? Oh, there's no executive bathroom. Bathroom. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay and the all most the expensive answers to his boss. questions. <laughs> and beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Ah, Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath, <gasps> and then spoke the code. Nassog 115! <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. 
He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? No, yeah, Please no, not really. Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. <laughs> no way, Jose. Okay, your fine. Scenario. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. Because <laughs> I, I do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't <laughs> want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? <laughs> Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both Kevin connected. Brighting, he is here. awesome. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. Aw, poor now later. <coughs> I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what to do and play next time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, I'd like to ask, would you guys like me to have a webcam? Um, I wouldn't mind having a webcam. I think it'd be cool. Uh, actually, that might be confusing. Well, never mind, but still, um, yeah, do you guys want me to use a uh, webcam? Because uh, if you do, cool, I'll totally do that. Why not? Uh, so yeah. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.